All right, welcome back to The Explainer. Today, we're diving into something straight out of science fiction, but maybe it's not. We're gonna decode a set of incredibly detailed blueprints for a real, honest-to-goodness warp drive. And listen, this isn't just some fan theory. This is a serious, physics-based look at how we might, just might, one day shatter the universe's ultimate speed limit. So let's just ask the big question right up front. Is faster-than-light travel even possible? I mean, we've all heard that nothing can go faster than light, right? Einstein's theory of relativity seems to put a pretty firm speed limit on the universe. But what if? What if the very same equations that set that limit also contain a loophole? A clever little backdoor that lets us cheat the cosmic speed trap without actually breaking the law. Okay, so how on earth could a loophole like that work? Well, the key... The entire foundation for this comes from a really brilliant piece of theoretical physics from back in 1994. A physicist named Miguel Alcabier came up with this idea, and it's called the Alcabier metric. Trust me, this thing completely changes the game when it comes to how we think about getting from A to B. And this is where it gets really clever. The big idea here isn't to build a ship that moves through space faster than light. That's the part that's impossible. No, the idea is to move a chunk of space itself around the ship. The best way to think about it is like a surfer on an ocean wave. The surfer isn't swimming faster than the wave, right? They're just riding it. The wave is doing all the work. Here, our ship is the surfer, and the wave, the wave is space-time itself. And the craziest part? Inside that bubble of space-time, your ship is just floating. It's in its own little pocket of normal space, not breaking a single law of physics. Right. But there's always a catch, isn't there? To create that wave in space-time, to bend the very fabric of the universe in such an extreme way, you need a very special, and let's be honest, a very problematic ingredient. You need something that, for all intents and purposes, really shouldn't even exist. You need something called negative energy. And yep, this is the big one. This is the fundamental roadblock. Without a stable source of this, this negative energy density, the whole idea just falls apart. It's not just a small problem to solve. It's the problem, the central, non-negotiable. We can't do it without this requirement. Just to give you a sense of the scale we're talking about, the blueprint calls for a negative energy density of around minus 10 to the 17 joules. That's a mind-boggling number. To put it another way, Imagine taking all the energy locked up in the mass of a large asteroid and then somehow flipping a switch and making it all negative. The sheer amount is just staggering. So the question is, where in the heck could you even find something like this? Well, believe it or not, the blueprints actually have an answer, and it comes from the super weird world of quantum physics. There's this thing called the Casimir effect, and what it shows is that if you get two tiny metal plates incredibly close together, we're talking nanometers apart, the quantum weirdness of empty space can actually create a little pocket of real measurable negative energy between them. So, impossibly, it seems this stuff does exist. And that, right there, is our potential source. Okay, but just making this stuff isn't enough, you know? You have to control it, keep it stable, and that's the second big piece of the puzzle. The plan here is to use something called a Bose-Einstein condensate, which is this super bizarre state of matter you get when you cool things down to almost absolute zero. Think of it like a structural scaffold. By tuning it just right, you can create a negative pressure, which basically acts like a force field, holding that delicate warp bubble together and stopping it from just poof, disappearing. So. We've got the mind-bending theory. We've got our exotic ingredients. Now let's get into the nuts and bolts. How does this all come together in an actual machine? The blueprint shows that the whole drive really boils down to three core critical systems working together. Yep, it all comes down to these three things working in perfect harmony. You've got the GFC, which shapes the bubble, the EMIS, which fuels it with that crazy negative energy, and then you have the BCA, a super smart AI whose whole job is to make sure the entire thing doesn't just fly apart. Let's dig into each one. First up is the gravitational field coupler, or GFC. You can think of this as the muscle of the operation. We're talking about a whole lattice of superconducting rings, and they're pumping over a million amps of current through them. 
This creates an absolutely colossal magnetic field, one so powerful it can literally create the first dent in space-time. This is the seed that starts the whole warp bubble. Okay, so the GFC makes the dent. What's next? That's where the Exotic Matter Injection System, or EMIS, comes in. This is what turns that dent into a real bubble. It uses these ultra-sensitive devices called squids to basically paint the edges of that dent with the negative energy we got from the Casimir effect. It's this precise injection that sustains the bubble and gives it its shape. And finally, holding it all together, you have the Bubble Control Algorithm, the BCA. This is the brain, the hyper-fast AI pilot. Because here's the thing, this warp bubble is fundamentally incredibly unstable. We're talking it wants to fall apart at any moment. So this AI has to make 10,000 calculations and adjustments every single second to keep it stable. It's using this advanced tensor network learning to predict any little wobble and fix it before the whole thing goes, well, boom. You know, the level of detail in these plans is just staggering. This isn't just a list of parts. It's a full-blown operating manual. I'm talking a step-by-step, five-part procedure for an actual hypothetical flight getting you from here to there faster than light. I mean, look at this. It's a whole propulsion sequence. Step one, the ramp phase. You fire up the negative energy lattice and poof, you nucleate your bubble. Step two, acceleration. You use that Bose-Einstein condensate to push the bubble and get it moving, say, up to 10 times the speed of light. Step three is steady state. You're just coasting now while that AI autopilot makes all the little course corrections. Step four, deceleration. You just reverse the whole process to slow down. And finally, step five, descent. You safely dissolve the bubble and bam, you're back in normal space time. It's wild. When you see it laid out like this, it almost sounds routine, doesn't it? But of course, it's anything but routine. We've just taken this incredible journey through some really wild physics and engineering. So now we've got to bring ourselves back down to Earth. We have to ask, what's really standing between this amazing blueprint and an actual working starship? And to its credit, the blueprint is brutally honest about the massive challenges. There are three big ones. First, the energy source. You'd need something insane, like an antimatter reactor, just to power this thing. The challenge level on that? Extreme. Then, the exotic matter. Actually making enough of this stable negative energy on demand? Well, that's currently rated unproven. We literally don't even know if it's possible at this scale. And finally, stability control. Making sure the AI and the hardware are fast enough to stop a catastrophic collapse? That's described as monumental. So, yeah some pretty big hurdles. So, where does that leave us? We have this blueprint that, according to the physics we know, actually works. It's sound, but it relies on engineering that feels like it's centuries away. So here's the question I wanna leave you with. Is this a blueprint for the impossible, or is it just the first draft of the inevitable? Is this just the next great engineering problem for humanity to solve? Something to think about. Thanks for joining me.